beautiful no matter what you're making these tatty paper fabric butterflies will go with it a big shout out to one of my favorites for the inspiration of these butterflies lori from grungy girl journals lori made these beautiful journals and used these butterflies throughout the pages which inspired me to make some for myself now head on over to Grungy Girl Journals and check out her beautiful junk journals. You're absolutely going to love them. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe and like to show us some love. I printed out my butterflies on just an ordinary white paper. So I used a very light 60 GSM paper. A normal everyday copy paper which is 80 GSM and a hundred GSM a, a better quality digital printers paper now honestly there is no difference to this project using any different sort of a paper you do need something that's a little bit pliable though I would not use cardstock I wouldn't use a photo paper or a matte paper you don't need to just use normal copy paper now you can use three fabrics I'm going to show you two that I actually made and then I had a, another idea which I'll show you at the end of the video so that you've got a couple of choices this is just a very light like a muslin cotton it's a hundred percent cotton and I got this from spotlight in Australia so it's white and I tea dyed it I also use this medical gauze I know you can get this in white but I found this in my mum's stash which I, I love because it's green. I've never seen this anywhere before. So this was perfect for this make. So I've made one out of this green gauze as well. You could definitely use a cheesecloth, but you don't want anything that's got a really big open weave because you just need something with a close weave that you're going to be able to fray. So start off by tearing a strip that's wider than your butterflies make it generously wider now before we go on I'm just going to show you my process for tea dyeing my fabric so I just scrunch my fabric up in the tea bath and then I lay it out on a baking tray after I've colored my fabric with the tea water I then add a little bit of coffee in the tea water to make it a little bit darker I'll then pick up a teaspoon of the darker watercolour and drip that on my fabric cloth. That gives me two colours, the lighter colour and the darker colour. And I do this when it's all scrunched up on the tray. Then I leave it like this and I sit the tray out in the sun and I don't touch this until it's perfectly dry. If it's winter where you are, just put it in the oven. And then when you unfold it, you get all of these beautiful variegated colors. I give it a light press with the iron because to do these butterflies, you do want a fairly flat surface. So now we're ready to put the butterflies onto the fabric. I've done my first one using the Distress Collage Medium. You can get this in a vintage color or you can get it in the white which goes transparent when it's dry but for today I'm going to use a matte gel medium matte gel medium is a collage adhesive you don't have to use this I do show you an alternative in a minute you need a small wide paintbrush you don't have to use these Tim Holtz style just use your El Cheapo and I suggest if you haven't got one, do yourself a favor and get yourself one of these silicone bone folders. You will use it for more than just a bone folder. You can grab one of these on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below so you can check them out. So I start by using a generous amount of the gel medium. 
You can use your fingers to hold your butterfly down. You can use a pokey tool, but try not to use the pointy end. Try and use something with a broader end. Now you couldn't see that there. So when I do the next butterfly, I'm gonna use my bone folder so you see better. And just pick up your butterfly when you place your butterfly down onto the fabric, make sure you leave enough room around the edge of the butterfly to cut a border. Now you spread it out with your fingers because there's no glue on the top. Use your bone folder to just push it down into the fabric. Then turn it over. You can be a little more aggressive on this side. So just push that glue down into the fabric from the back side of the butterfly. Now I'm going to leave this to dry and while it's drying I'm going to glue down the butterfly on the medical gauze. I'm going to use exactly the same process. Generous amount of the gel medium and I'm using my bone folder to hold it down. Make sure you get enough of this gel medium on the antennas because you don't want them to lift up later. I'm using two layers of the gauze because one layer just won't be showy enough. So again, lay your butterfly down so it's got enough room around it to cut a border. Press it down with your bone folder and push that gauze down into the glue and just leave them to dry. If you're doing quite a few, you just keep going up that piece of fabric. Now these are dry. If it's a hot day, it only takes about 10 minutes. If it's a little bit cooler where you are, just leave it until it is touch dry. And then come back in and cut around the edge of your butterflies. You can leave as wide a border as you like. I find this width is a good width to cut it. You don't have to be as neat cutting this as you would if it was paper because we're going to fray the edges. So you can be a little bit rough. And I snip into the corners, I'll call them corners, and that's on all of these points. This just helps you fray it a lot better. So it's looking pretty good. If you cut away the excess of your fabric, it just makes it a little bit easier to handle. Now the gauze, you've got to be pretty careful how you cut this out. If you cut it too close, you're going to lose a lot of your edge fray. So don't cut this too close because it does behave a lot different to the, the um, woven fabric. It's still a good idea to cut in to the edges of the antenna and the wings. I just use a pokey tool. You can use an awl, but you just need something with a thicker, sharp edge. I find it's best to lay it on the table to do this as well. And you tease out the edges. Don't go too far with this. You only need to tease it out a little bit, especially on the gauze, because as you pick them up and move them around and get ready to use them in your junk journal, they sort of fray a bit more. So don't over fray them to start with. And then once you get them ready to place in your junk journal, you'll know if you need to fray them a bit more. But they look absolutely beautiful once they start to fray. Now this is the 100% cotton. It's got a finer weave, but you just, again, just tease it out. As you go around, you don't need to overdo it. When those longer threads come hanging out the side, just leave them there. Don't pull them with your fingers because you can actually pull too much of the threads away and you'll leave a, bit, a bald patch. So just leave them there. If you've got too much at the end of the antenna, you can cut them off or fray them again to get a bit more of a shape. Well, what do you think, Laurie? Have I done them the same way you do? 
I'm not sure. But anyway, I, I know we can't all get the same sort of fabric or the same shape butterflies. But these butterflies are from the Graphics Fairy. She's got some beautiful butterflies on her website. So I'll leave her link below so you can go and grab her butterflies if you want to make them the same as these. Now I wanted to do an experiment and see whether or not they would work out on a normal woven fabric. This is a piece of fabric from a fat quarter. Now I made a small journal out of this so I wanted to make a butterfly to match the journal and I'm going to glue it on the cover. So I used it and I'm happy to say it works. So you can use a normal woven fabric to make these tatty butterflies, no problem at all. And look at that, it just matches this little journal perfectly. And I had a piece of the tea dyed fabric, the backing fabric left over. So I teased out the edges of that a little bit more and put that behind the butterfly to make it pop. And I, I love this, this looks so good. So if you're interested in knowing how I made this little journal, I've got a class coming up for this one soon. So be on the lookout, I'll be sharing it in the not too far future. Now just in case you wanted to know, can you use something else other than the gel medium to glue your butterfly onto your fabric? Yes, you can. I've done a quick test and I used PVA glue but what I done was I added a little bit of water to it to make it reasonably runny. When you use this, you've got to be careful because the paper gets really wet. It gets much wetter than it does if you use the gel medium. So when the paper gets wet, it actually soaks all the way through the butterfly. And when it soaks through the butterfly, it becomes sticky both at the back and the front. So when you put it on your fabric and if you turn it over, you really got to make sure you use a very good non-stick cover on your table to do this because otherwise the front of your butterfly will stick to whatever you're pressing it down on. So you can use PVA glue to do this technique. I know you're going to love making these tatty butterflies. If any of you need any tips on fussy cutting, I've got this fantastic video here. Just takes a little bit of practice and you'll be cutting like a pro in no time at all. Thanks for tuning in. Bye for now.